You, what's up everybody, yo what up, hey uh, welcome back to WWTA News, and uh, this is what we talk about, news, welcome back, hey look um, we got some news to go through, we're gonna go ahead and kick this off as usual, but before we do, could I get you to hit that like button and subscribe if you already haven't, and remember if there's any family, friends, or loved ones who you think could could, could really need to hear information like this to get them uh, moving forward in a direction uh, on track to better their lives hey share it to them so uh yeah we got some news and let's get into it we got an article here well it's not really an article <laughs> we don't have an article we actually have a, uh, a post on a twitter feed and it's for reserve um, um reserve currency and uh, something i've been keeping up with and i thought i'd share it uh, I don't know if any of you are keeping up with it or if you are holders of the currency, but I want to share it because I am a holder and it's something that I probably will have to do a crypto spotlight on. But let's go ahead and check it out. So uh, Reserve, right? Reserve Pro Protocol. One of the largest digital marketplaces in Latin America joins forces with Reserve with the aim of continuing to expand the project in the merchant sector. What are they talking about? First off, they're talking about Mercado Libre, and um, but they're talking about uh, using crypto, right? Using crypto for payment. That's what's going on. And so a lot of cryptocurrency is moving in that direction because it's literally in the, the, the statement alone, cryptocurrency. So Latin America, uh, we're, well, we're well aware of El Salvador, um, not just El Salvador. What is the uh, next one? Maybe Honduras? Um, what's the other one? It's not just Honduras. It's another one out there. Uh, Panama, uh, and and more. <laughs> Excellent, right? Uh, they're coming into the crypto space, and we're going to see the legalization of Bitcoin as well as cryptocurrencies as a whole become legal tender, and that's all we really need to happen because it pretty much puts an end to that uh, treasury note that we're so accustomed to here in the United States. So uh, interesting that that little tweet was, and I thought I should share it with you, all, especially if you're involved in the uh, reserve protocol currency. Um, we've got something here. It says Binance blocks crypto accounts of relatives tied to the Russian government. That's interesting, right? Because uh, Binance is operating as an exchange. And so uh, as an exchange doing business directly, you know, with other countries and so on and so forth, dealing with, you know, UCC and all their rules and regulations, they actually have to comply, right, <laughs> in order to continue to operate and conduct business is that what's happening makes you wonder is that what's happening but let's check this article out the binance cryptocurrency exchange is adopting more measures to prevent the russian government from uh, mitigating the impact of sanctions through the use of crypto binance has shut down several accounts tied to relatives of senior kremlin officials over the past two months since russia began military action in ukraine um, according to the report, the affected persons included uh, Elizaveta Peskova, the daughter of Russian President Vladimir Putin's spokesman, uh, Dmitry, Dmitry Peskov, and uh, Polina Koval Kovaleva, uh, the stepdaughter of Foreign Minister Sir Sergei Lav Lavrov. Uh, Binance said it uh, had also blocked Kirill Malofeviev, Malo Feyev, the son of uh, Konstantin Malo Feyev, a Russian oligarch who was pre previously charged with violating sanctions from the United States. Interesting, right? This is all interesting because it's letting you know that right now dealing with an exchange, you still fall under sanctions from other countries, right? They can still come together and, and, and block you, right? as you know dealing with an exchange so that kind of kind of puts a halt to you turning your money into other currencies that way going through exchanges so you know it's very interesting because they, they also want to have regulation on exchanges so just something to think about uh you know stuff going on out in the world uh we've got an article here that says first mover asia singapore's disaster for retail crypto is spooking in uh, institutional money 
What do you mean? Uh, Three Arrows Capital's decision last week to move its headquarters to Dubai reflects growing concerns about Singapore's increasing regulatory scrutiny of crypto. Uh, Bitcoin returns to where it started over the weekend, this weekend. Uh, Yeah, so, uh, you know, I don't really know what's going on with the uh, retail market right now. It's a little strange. Uh, I'm sure all of you have been watching over the past weekend, uh, this past weekend. You've been watching these numbers just drop. Like, they just been dropping. And it's not just this weekend. It's been going off maybe a week, two weeks, consecutive drops in, uh, in uh, the value of these currencies. So I'm not sure what's going on. I, I, you know, maybe we'll do some digging around and see. But here, uh, they're telling us that there was a disaster for retail, right? And it's coming from... Uh, three arrows capital decision last week um okay i don't think you know that like is that really turning the whole market across the face of what we know as the earth kind of strange all right we got one here it says after eight years wikipedia stops accepting bitcoin and ethereum donations what are they doing right eight years they've been accepting these donations and now they're stopping huh yeah, another article that says Wikipedia stopped accepting crypto donations on environmental uh, other and other grounds. Um, what? The announcement follows a vote uh, by the Wikimedia Wikimedia community in which 71.2% voted in favor of proposal to stop accepting cryptocurrency because of environmental or other grounds. Uh, Bitcoin is now running with the Lightning Network. Hmm. Um, Ethereum isn't that crazy, so I would only wonder uh, what's truly going on behind closed doors with that, because that doesn't really make any sense, now does it? Mm. All right, we got an article here that says NFT subscriptions are better paywalls. Turning subscriptions into a bearer asset is better for everyone, says our media columnist. The article is part of Coin Desk Payment Week. Let's hear what they got to say. What's Coin Desk got to speak on about this right here, right? Uh, so it says subscriptions are the future of media, right? From Netflix, all you can eat streaming to the New York Times company's 10 million subscribers putting up a paywall and charging people uh, uh, looks like the way to go. Now, let me say this. Yes. Oh, my God. When you want to look at something from New York Times, they charging you. There's a paywall there. You can't view uh, these news articles without paying. I get that. But, you know, maybe they should use blockchain. And then to read the article, you could pay maybe, I don't know, one doge coin or something, you know, or maybe um, 25 cents of a, of a stable coin. You know what I'm saying? Something, you know what I'm saying? Which would be like point zero uh, or point two five, you know what I'm saying, of a stable coin. Something like that to where it's fair for you to get the article that you want to read and then you can get an uh, uh, uh access via nft that article you know what i'm saying like you can buy a copy of that article and you can keep it for, for all eternity if you want to and you can buy that article so i mean <laughs> there you go with ideas right hey look y'all think about that that's a good idea uh but here we go like i get subscriptions to watch entertainment right well it, it media right so it's it's media uh so i guess when we talk about news articles t- technically you could say the same so maybe we, you know, a subscription. Ah, I don't know. You know, I don't. My hands are up in the air on that one. But let's continue because that's just a tricky one right there. All right. So the author, Corey Doctorow, calls the Times cancellation page an example of late stage capitalism's inevitable uh, creation of paperwork tsunamis. Uh, you can get in easily, but there's an infinitude of hurdles to get out. So do blockchains fix this? <laughs> I think they could if you turned um, articles and stuff into non-fungible tokens, which could then be bought and then put into your personal wallet. And then when you're done with it, you can either sell the article. Look at that. You can sell, put the article up for sale and let somebody else buy it. You see what I'm saying? And then, uh, you know, some you know somebody could always buy the Whether they buy it for $0.10, cents, $0.15, cents, $0.05, cents, it doesn't matter. Make it a non-fungible token and sell it. All right, great idea. Let's move along. Um, blockchains are good at putting power in the hands of end users. Uh, that's because of cryptocurrency token is a bare asset. It can be exchanged and retain its value without the need for a third party. Examples are gold, cash, or the bare bonds in Die Hard, right? Okay, so uh, what are you really saying here? Listen, uh, in regards uh, to um, NFTs as being subscription-based, that's a smart idea. 
that's a smart idea. It makes sense. Um, yes, there are paywalls behind a lot of different things that we use. Like, say, for instance, um, you want to watch a TV show on Netflix. Okay, well, what's the charge uh, for me to watch the show? Okay, you know what I'm saying? I just want to watch this episode. And, 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 and so one capitalist and capitalism, it promotes greed and growing. Uh, especially value if you're the one holding the content you can charge what you want you know what i'm saying i get that and so then that puts everything in an ugly situation but if i want to watch um let's say uh a tv show an episode of a tv show why can't i pay you one dogecoin to watch that episode you know what i'm saying and, and, and then i have that episode i don't know for 24 hours so it gives me 24 hours to watch that episode and then after the 24 hours that non-fungible token just poof disappears Right. I had 24 hours to watch it. I might have paid one Dogecoin, two Dogecoins. You know what I'm saying? Now, I, I know something like that exists and you pay real money for it. Uh, well, you pay <laughs> real money. <laughs> Do you really pay real money or are you just paying treasury notes? Uh, <laughs> book information. Uh, so right now, you know, technically, you know, you can get served content um, like on Amazon. Of course, they'll charge you like what is it? Uh, a thirteen ninety nine to watch uh, uh, this season or buy the season for sixty four dollars. Like, who's really trying to do all that, bro? Calm down. Uh, tonight, I want to watch an episode. All right, so let's go blockchain. Let's go NFT. And I know everybody saying, "Oh, NFT is blockchain, crypto is bad, is bad, bad." No, 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 no. Calm down. It's technology. Use the technology. Web three is the level of of payment on the internet. Just just chill out for a second. Let's just just absorb it. If you can draw up that digital information into a non-fungible contract token contract and then i can therefore spend a few uh, coins to get that access to that and then in 24 hours it expires and it, i no longer have it in existence then boom you're getting paid constantly for this stuff it's constant payment for content so you should take advantage of this and stop thinking oh my god this is garbage like well who would do any of this stuff smart people but let's move along all right, let's move along because we can go for days on that. All right, IMF raises concerns over the Central African Republic adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender. What? Wait a minute. What? Yes, that's right. Let's get to it. The IMF has raised concerns over the Central African Republic's adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender due to the lack of robust payment systems in the country. Really? <laughs> yeah, you, you, you don't want that because it's going to end the system, right? The article says the International Monetary Fund expressed concerns over the Central African Republic's adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender. Oh, no, we don't. Want, I am. A, no, El Salvador. I am. A, no, Africa. <laughs> no. The IMF's Africa head, Abebe Amro Selassie, said for Bitcoin to work as legal tender, the country must already have a robust payment system in place along with financial transparency. So they need blockchain and they need these devices to accept these payments. That's what they need, okay? Second, uh, nation to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender. <laughs> Get it in, right? Hey, look, the National Assembly of the Central African Republic voted to pass the legal tender bill to improve the country's economic prospects. Despite being rich in natural resources, the country counts as one of the world's poorest nations. Hmm? Right. Is that something following the passing of the Bitcoin legal tender bill? Obey, obey, Namisio, Namsio, Obed Namsio, the chief of, of staff to President Faustin Archange or Archange or Archange. I don't know. That, I hope I didn't chop it up too bad. Forgive me. Uh, to Adera, to Adera uh, said it was. <laughs> Forgive me if I chopped that name up. I tried my best to get it. That name, I wrestled with it. Forgive me. Hey, you know, I'm sorry. It is what it is. But, you know, end quote. A decisive step toward opening up new opportunities for our country. Like El Salvador, the Central African Republic will operate a dual currency system with Bitcoin used alongside its existing fiat currency, the CFA franc. Hmm. How about that? How about they're legalizing? Now, I know, uh, I don't know if a lot of you uh, paid attention, but this weekend there was a lot of talk that Bitcoin was going to destroy all 
uh, other altcoins and currencies, uh, cryptocurrencies. And, uh, you know, maybe it's news articles like this to make people feel that way. But you cannot run everybody on one payment rail, one system that won't work. You're going to corrupt this system. It's going to slow up and shut down. Look at how Ethereum was operating. It took levels to be created from different um, um, fork offs or break offs of those rails to make uh, different currencies move. So <laughs> don't get too excited. The other altcoins are going to be here and they got things to do. Uh, it just so happens that the talk of town is Bitcoin because everybody knows that name. You know, it's Bitcoin. Everybody knows it. So don't get ahead of yourself. All right. So uh, anyways, that's still magnificent news to see that, yes, cryptocurrencies are becoming legal tender and it's going to continue. This, this fire is going to continue, continue to grow because it's necessary because a lot of countries want to get away from uh, uh, this this ruling hand over top of their countries. All right. We're going to close with this article right here. Germany is the number one tax haven for crypto investors with zero percent tax rates. What? Germany, what you doing? Cryptocurrency investors in Germany can benefit from 0% tax rates, on, uh, tax rates on their profits if they hold their coins for a year without cashing out. What are you talking about? Yeah, you heard that right. Let's get it. Germany has recently made news for being a crypto friendly nation that encourages citizens to hold their cryptocurrency. The German Federal Central Tax Office regards cryptocurrencies as private money for tax reasons. This means that cryptocurrencies are neither regarded as legal tender, a form of foreign currency, nor a form of property. So uh, it gets rid of the commodities. You know what that means? Gains tax. The concept is straightforward. If you want to benefit from cryptocurrencies, you must keep them for a full 365 days, one year. If you subsequently convert them back into fiat money, all gains you make are tax free. And that's if you hold it for a year. So isn't that amazing? Germany doing big things. Can the rest of the world follow behind? Can everybody come up behind in 365 days? Yeah, that sounds good. Anyone who sells their cryptocurrency before the end of the holding period or holding term, formerly known as speculative period, must pay capital gains tax on the whole profit if it exceeds 600 euros. That is, whew, huh? Look at that right there. Germany doing big things, you know what I'm saying? Can we get the rest of the world to maybe follow that 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 concept and that idea? You know, I mean, there's traders out here. and Traders, you know, they make their money by doing trades on a regular basis. But for those who are holding uh, their currencies because they know their currencies and they have value and they just haven't spent them and, and after a year they're able to, it becomes difficult the more you think about it though but um you know if you've been holding something for more than a year then you can get away from that capital capital gains tax i mean i get that uh, but but when you look at it as being currency do you even need a capital gains tax i kind of like what uh they're doing in el salvador and in, in, uh, africa with the bitcoin concept right uh once you make it that currency it's like okay uh, how are you going to be taxing this currency? You know what I'm saying? The current and, and, and I'll close with this because I get long winded. But I say this. If 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 you have a home, which is a uh, a property, it's an item, it's an asset, right? They call it an asset. It's it's a, it's a place that you live in. It can be resold, right? You can sell a home. So when that goes up in value, um, you have to pay those taxes. If you sell that home while it's up in value, they want capital gains, which is you know like really what are you saying here you know what i'm saying but it, 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 that's how the system works but when you talk about money right let's talk about we have to uh first i'll say this let's talk about the united states dollar which is a um, it's a uh, treasury bond right it's really nothing special but it's used in the united states to represent money so it's used in that system so it's money so for the sake of argument we'll just call that the money now, if that money, if that dollar goes up in value from one dollar to one dollar and ten cents value. Right. Uh, do they charge you a capital gains tax on that money when you go into the store and you're spending that stuff? No, they don't because it's a currency. Right. It's supposed to be a currency. Right. Um, so it's no different. Right. But even though we understand that it's only a record banknote a record to keep track of the debt in the united states i get it i know but you know let's use something for instance let's use gold um so gold 
is used to pay off debts, gold and silver. Now, gold and silver's value goes up and down all the time. Do you pay a capital gains tax on the gold and silver that you hold? I don't know. That's a very good question. I'm about to look that up. But if anybody knows, post that in the comments below because that, that, that'll start a good conversation right there. I'm not aware. I haven't looked it up, but I, I, I'm really not aware that you pay capital gains tax on your gold and silver. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I'll look that up. Nonetheless, I'll, I'll see what I can find out because that is an interesting question. Do you pay capital gains tax on gold and silver that you hold? And, and does, who knows how much gold and silver you hold in any way as far as you paying for it? You know what I'm saying? Like if you got some gold and silver, what you going to keep on the books every time I purchase some gold and silver? Now I got to get my gold and silver out the street. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, ah. You know what I'm saying? So that's a good question. I'm going to go ahead and close it down. I know I got a long one. Please forgive me. If you like the video, hit that like button. Don't forget to share this video with any family, friends, and loved ones who you think can use this information. And I will talk in the next one with some good information if I got it.